What's going on smart people? A couple days ago I made a video saying that I was trying to prepare for quantum field theory because they are offering the second part of a two-part course in it this semester. I haven't had the first part of the course but I would still like to sit in on the class so I wanted to come prepared. Now I know that the person teaching the second semester does research in Lattice QCD which is why in that video I said that I have a suspicion that the class is going to be heavily centered on the path integral approach to field theory. So I reached out to the professor. I said, I'd like to sit in on the course. What did you guys cover last semester? What are you covering this semester? What do I need to make sure I understand before sitting in on the course? And then he pointed out my false assumption being that I assumed that he also taught the first semester of the course, which is not true. The first semester course of quantum field theory was taught by one of my professors who researches perturbative QCD. Then the light bulb goes off. I see what they're doing here. If you have perturbative and lattice, that's because you have one who's taking the second quantization approach and then the other taking the path integral approach. That way the students get exposure to both. And that is exactly what's going on. So today I want to go over exactly what was covered in the first and then second semester as told to me from this professor. I'm not going to go over the material itself, just really the table of contents and say what was covered in semester one and what will be covered in semester two. My professor mentioned that the notes they will be following is a course in field theory by Pierre Van B. For the second course in field theory, they will be covering chapters 6 through 8 and then 15 through 22, which means QFT1 will cover roughly everything else. Uh, and this is a pretty concise set of lecture notes, so I'm assuming just like the other courses I've had with them, they'll expand on their own lecture notes and really just use this as a reference because 110 pages for field theory just doesn't seem like very much. It seems like a reference book or a, uh, like a handbook. So if 6 through 8 and 15 through 22 is QFT2, let's talk about QFT1. So it says that they must have covered the introduction, go figure, motivation, which is probably going over things like black body radiation and, and light. Uh, two is quantization of fields, and that makes perfect sense considering the first semester is taught by someone who does perturbative QCD, so they would lean heavily on the second quantization approach. Three, Euler-Lagrange equations. I think from that I can expect that they went over just classical field theory initially. Four, tree-level diagrams, so like Feynman diagrams, but without loops. Five, Hamiltonian perturbation theory. I wonder if that's just old-fashioned perturbation theory that they have in regular quantum field theory textbooks, or if it's an actual refresher on basic perturbation theory that you learn in your regular quantum mechanics. Um, and that, so we're skipping over six through eight because that's semester two which means 9 through 14 is also first semester QFT, which covers the scattering matrix, the S matrix. I talked about that briefly in the previous video. Cross sections, decay rates, are so really a lot of scattering. The Dirac equation and plane wave solutions of the Dirac equation and the Dirac Hamiltonian. So that should sum up a first semester course in quantum field theory. Personally, that seems totally manageable. That doesn't seem that overwhelming, just finishing up with the Dirac equation. I guess I had this uh, this expectation of making it like halfway through QED before getting into quantum field theory two, or maybe also incorporating path integrals into QFT one. But that's that's cool. I can I can handle that. I think that tells me that I was trying to go through quantum field theory at a much faster pace than I should have been, which makes me feel better about how overwhelming it kind of was. So that means I can take it a little bit slower, which is nice. And I can I can get through this by this next semester because that's more or less where I was at in the first place. So that brings us into QFT2 which starts at chapter 6 which is path integrals and quantum mechanics that makes sense. It's coming up with quantum field theory with a completely different approach without using the quantization. Uh, actually in my quantum mechanics 2 course in undergrad we actually finished up with path integrals and quantum mechanics so I probably still have my notes lying around somewhere. Chapter 7 path integrals and field theory perturbative expansions for field theory. I'm not going to lie to you. Path integrals at this point in time, I'm very uncomfortable with. Not, not that they like scare me, it's just that I really don't understand them. I think I'm better off with the uh, quantization approach at this point. But I think pretty universally people agree that the quantization approach is easier. I think it's also less formal. So I'll probably just get there when I get there. Uh, what, what else was there? So that's six through eight perturbation, perturbative expansions for field theory. I probably have to look more uh, into what that entails because it kind of sounds self-explanatory or kind of obvious that you'd use perturbative expansions. Like if you have all of these 
uh, simple harmonic oscillators and then you want these particles to interact, then you have to have it like an anharmonic oscillator. And to do that, you can't really solve it exactly. You'd have to have like perturbative corrections. I don't know if that's what they're talking about, but that's what I think that they might be talking about. Then we got 15 through 22, a nice stretch of chapters. Path integrals for fermions, Feynman rules for vector fields, quantum electrodynamics, so finally getting into big boy QED or big grill, uh, non-abelian gauge theories, the Higgs mechanisms, so probably getting into, uh, right before that, probably getting into some basic QCD, I would, I would assume, uh, gauge fixing and ghosts, the standard model, loop corrections, and renormalization, all of that in 99 pages. I'm curious to see what this whole set of notes actually looks like. I haven't personally gone through it. After seeing what will be covered in QFT2, I think it's it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a doozy. It looks pretty challenging. I do feel better about quantum field theory 1. It seems like they're covering a reasonable amount in one semester. However, just being less familiar with QED and QCD, which is much harder than QED, that just seems pretty intimidating. I'm glad I'm just sitting in on it instead of just trying to take it for credit, which would be insane. You might be wondering why I'm sitting in on it in the first place and that is because by the end of the year I'm hoping to know whether I want to go the perturbative or the lattice QCD route and I thought what better way than to take a formal course in quantum field theory taught by someone who does lattice QCD so I thought that'll give me a good exposure to both sides so that I can you know pick an advisor. Now I already asked my professor if I could sit in on the lectures because I already had them for a different class and he said of course. Now I'm wondering if on top of the lectures if I'll also get the homework that the people who aren't just auditing the class will get. I don't think so, but I hope I do. Just because I think it would be good practice, but if I don't, I'm sure I could still find more exercises in my field theory book. Uh, out of the topics that I just listed that will be covered in either QFT1 or QFT2, what sounds the most interesting to you? Let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you guys there. Wait! I'm not done. In yesterday's video, at the very end, I challenged you to show that the Klein-Gordon equation is invariant under Lorentz transformation. I said the first person to send me a correct solution to smartpeopleask at gmail.com will have their solution posted on this video, as well as any message they would like to say, and the winner was Zane Khan. Zane Khan says, look mom, I'm on the YouTubes. This actually wasn't the message, it's just part of the document. And they used a slightly different Lorentz transformation, where they use plus instead of minuses, but that doesn't actually matter, the direction doesn't matter, and they go through the exact same motions that I did for showing that the Schrodinger equation was not invariant. So you expand the chain rule for both partial derivatives for time and space, but only in this case the Klein-Gordon equation is second order in both time and space, so you have to do it also for time, and then substituting it into the untransformed Klein-Gordon equation and pulling out some factors of 1 minus v squared over c squared gives you the correct solution. Good job, Zane. And his message was, Shankar is Dankar, and believe in the heart of cards, and you too can become a path integral boy. If you don't believe, well, meh. That's actually a pretty appropriate message considering what we talked about today. But you know, we live in a society, and in a society, I can't leave people out. So this is everyone else who submitted to the challenge. Thank you all for participating. It's pretty cool to see people take time out of the day just to do a physics problem. You are my kind of people. Let me know in the comment section if I should do these kinds of things more often, and I will see you guys there.